Hi, this is Andrew Gaffney, publisher of Retail Touchpoints. I'm here at NRF and I'm joined by Rob Garf with Demandware. Rob, thanks for making time. Oh, my pleasure, Andrew. Always a great time to see you. So I stopped by the booth earlier and I saw you guys have done some interesting research recently uh, with the University of Arizona around sort of the changing digital shopper in the fashion industry. Tell our viewers a little bit more about that. Yeah, that's right. We partnered up with, uh, as you mentioned, the University of Arizona, the Terry Lundgren Center for Retailing. Okay. You know, we play really at the intersection of the retailer and the consumer experience and especially very well entrenched in the fashion retailer where most of our clients play. And so we really wanted to get in the head of that consumer uh, in the changing face of retailer. Uh, so what we did is we partnered up with the university and, we, and they reached out to about 7,000 consumers in the US, UK, France, and Germany. And uh, what was extremely interesting is that there was this new and emerging consumer that they identified, uh, one that is defined both as digitally engaged and also engaged with fashion, and they indexed extremely high in both. Okay. And what they found is while it's a fairly small segment of the market, about 22%, um, they represent an, a huge fashion spend. Uh, in fact, about 69% of purchasing power came from this small 22% of the market. And, and I think the report was titled Digital Divas. I mean, did it talk about the, the influence that they have overall? That's right, yeah. So uh, they coined the term Digital Divas just to speak to uh, the great power and influence they have. Like I mentioned, uh, the 69% of purchase power, while 29% is direct spend, another 40% uh, totaling 69% is influence spend. Right? So it's not just what they're doing directly, but what they're doing and saying and communicating with their friends, families, and colleagues. They're essentially the epicenter uh, for the fashion industry, and you want to make sure as a retailer, of course, uh, that you're understanding what they like, what they don't like, how to better serve them over time. Okay. What are some of the ways that your customers are doing that? How are they better understanding and serving those customers, those influencers? Yeah, so first of all, they're listening, so they're better understanding what these digital divas are saying, uh, both good and bad, okay. and uh, reacting to them. But the second point is they're actually really bridging uh, the online and offline interactions. So uh, many of our clients are actually using our digital platform as the backbone to really bring together both that digital experience, oftentimes happening on a PC, tablet, mobile phone, and really parlaying that into the actual physical store, not only bridging uh, that interaction, but also then empowering the store associates with the same content the same knowledge. What we found, Andrew, is that um, the digital divas are information omnivores. They are devouring information, about 3.5 information sources they are seeking out as part of the research and discovery. So retailers want to make sure that same information that's available to those divas offline, I'm sorry, online, uh, is available also offline the within the store. Yeah. So that's an interesting trend you bring up around convergence. How, how does you know, commerce engines like yours uh, serve in that world of convergence? How are they going to make the, yeah. the migration? Well, our assertion actually is that uh, the traditional point of sale is uh, on, in a slow death. Uh, you know, retailers, if you look at the investment cycle, first started investing in the electronic cash register in the mid-70s. Uh, the last wave of investment happened at around the 2000s, early 2000s with the Java-based point of sale. And uh, we're on the verge the next two to three years on a wholesale P POS refresh. And what we're hearing from our clients, what we're hearing from the retailer and uh, retail industry in large, is that uh, there's no real reason to maintain two different, essentially, customer interaction platforms, right? You don't need one for the digital world and one for the store world, but why not just have one? And we think that uh, the e-commerce platform is really well positioned to do that. It has the most robust information about products, it has the most up-to-date information about pricing and promotions, and uh, it's just by virtue of the architecture is more easily integrated into other devices, applications, or channels. So on a mobile device, that becomes the, the, the POS? That becomes the virtual point of sale. Okay. A any early adopters in that, or is it we still on the? We are still on the crux. You know, we have some early adopter clients, for instance, Veramoda, a uh, retail brand in Europe who does pop-up stores and instead of bringing on full-on in-store processors, and in fact, uh, they actually don't merchandise these pop-up stores with a lot of product. They have some displays and some billboards, but they're using demandware as the virtual point of sale to be able to scan uh, the product, uh, be able to put it into the cart and be able to check out virtual. virtually. Okay. That's right. So we see that happening again as we see this next wave of point of sale investment happening 
uh, retailers are really strongly considering the e-commerce platform as that uh, single entity to manage the consumer interaction. That's great. Thank you very much for coming by and sharing your insights. My pleasure. Good to see you again, Rob. All right, thank you.